at the end of 21 years, and they were great. Berkeley and Seattle were both fabulous theaters, and I loved the cities, but I just thought with the way arts management had changed, which had become much more about fundraising and so, not that I, I actually love fundraising and I'm good at it, but it, it, it felt at one point in Seattle, I said to my husband, it feels like I'm running for the mayor of Seattle, not being an artist anymore. And I just felt like I wanted to do something different. And when I was looking for freelance directing, I said, I want to freelance places I've never been. So the South was one of those places, having been on the West Coast for 21 years. There were two jobs open at the Savannah College of Art and Design one to teach directing, my field, and one to teach sound design, his field. So it was sort of like, <laughs> hello. So we applied, and you know, we were woken up at 5 a.m. from an HR person and who didn't realize they were calling the West Coast. They wound up hiring both of us. So 10 years later, you know, we, I realized that, I, that teaching was exactly what I wanted to do. By the fifth year, my husband got his MFA in sound design there, which I didn't get until two years ago, so you'll know my age. By the time I could get Medicare, I got my MFA. <laughs> I got them in the same year. I have not wanted to go back to running a theater because I've just found the role of bringing the next generation into the profession to be just the most rewarding, wonderful thing. I was at SCAD for 10 years, and about year seven or eight, I started to feel like I was ready to be in a leadership position. Other than the West Coast, which I still love, I thought the other kind of place to look would be somewhere near the DC, New York area. Interestingly enough, I'm a big horseback rider. So Northern Virginia, you know, turned up on the radar screen. And then I know I've worked with Tony Leslie James professionally, worked with David Leong professionally, worked with Scott Bradley professionally. So VCU was attractive to me. It felt to me like exactly the right kind of opportunity. In the first year, the first semester, I'm not going to do anything but try to figure out what is this job. <laughs> uh, I'm hoping to direct the third show of this season, but I might do a Shakespeare. Uh, I direct a lot of Shakespeare. We haven't done that, and I, I'm interested in something that not only can really further the students, but gives me an opportunity to interact with the community. So it'll be something that, that gives me an opportunity to get to know further, not just the, the students here, but what's the community like. And teaching, yes, I absolutely want to teach. I'm very good at teaching any classical acting. I've taught plain old straight acting. I've taught directing. I've taught the business of theater. I love to teach as a class I do of women in dramatic arts that's really focused on not just um, theater, but on dance and scenic design and now uh, TV because there's so much interesting stuff going on with women, particularly in network and cable TV. There are a lot of very powerful women out there, finally. He is staying at SCAD for at least a year. Uh, he has a great position there. The sound design department there is much more film, and that is what he's doing now. So he, he with me, he did theater sound design, not musicals, but straight plays. So that's his former life, and now his current life is much more in the world of, of film and television sound, which he loves. So, you know, I'm hopeful that over time we can craft a position. We have adjunct professors in sound design here, but no program where we should. And cinema and film and don't really have a person. The one thing that I realized when I moved from Seattle to Savannah, <laughs> which was a huge culture shock, <laughs> um, I'd, I'd underestimated how much I missed being part of a, an active theater community. But Savannah really had no, no theater scene to speak of. I missed that, and I did realize fairly early on that the next move I would make would have to be back to some place where there was some sort of theater scene because I missed it. So the proximity to DC, before I got, I'm getting to know Richmond better, the main draw was I know that theater scene very well and I think it's terrific 
and the proximity to New York, quite frankly, it's not that hard to get there. And I'm a Tony voter, so I've actually never been able to vote because I can't see enough shows. So I'm hoping to be able to do that. But then, now that I'm here, you know, getting to know uh, Nathaniel and, you know, Bruce and being over, I just saw In the Heights, that's a great developing theater. And we're developing a relationship with them. But the, the smaller theaters here, who I haven't yet met everybody, but I see the work that's being done, and it's exciting. You know, it's great that there's a local scene that we're going to be able to help grow and vice versa. I'm here because I think we can become a major, major, major training program. I think we already are there in terms of some of our design placement. Uh, and I would like to see us really up our game so that we can get our graduates the biggest the biggest launch we can possibly give them. That may mean that they stay in Richmond. It doesn't necessarily mean they become movie stars or go to New York, but, but that we give the best possible training program we can and the best professional access because certainly looking at the state, where we are with Richmond having such a great art scene, theater scene, and who we've already got on the faculty, having the connections they have nationally. We can provide students with something nobody else can. But I like, you know, the, the, the kind of feel of a public university, of an urban university, serving everybody, very diverse student body, very proud of our very diverse faculty. Not everybody has that. And I think, you know, having lived in a city like Savannah, these sort of mid-range cities like Richmond, they're also the wave of the future in terms of being able to solve some of the problems that the larger cities can't and really providing a livable environment for artists where they're not priced out of the realm of possibility. And so I think a city like Richmond can become a very exciting place to live that's much more affordable for artists and where we can really uh, have a voice in what's going on in the city and be proud of what we do.